We're going to think uh, this morning uh, about Matthew uh, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And uh, so why don't you read along as I read these words this morning. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let's uh, pray together one more time. Father, we thank you for these wonderful words of Jesus Christ, and we pray that they would ring in our ears today as we seek to hear from you and as we seek to gather together as a community of people who um, want to be called your children. We thank you for this morning. We pray that you would give us sharp minds, and uh, we pray that you would even prepare our hearts as we get ready to celebrate communion today. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this uh, passage that we have here is one of the most important passages in the New Testament. Uh, we call it the Great Commission, and what we have in it is Jesus' final command. This was his last instructions, not, not just to the apostles who were there at that moment, but to every generation of Christians who would come after them, including us today. So this is not just the Great Commission, this is our Great Commission. This is what Jesus Christ says that our church is to be all about, going and making uh, disciples. And in fact, uh, many years ago when the elders developed our purpose statement, we based it around this passage. We say that Grace Church exists. Our, our reason for being is to make disciples, first of all, who are alive in Christ, uh, that speaks to our, our relationship with God. To make disciples who are connected with each other, and, and that speaks to our relationships with other believers in Christ around us in the church. And that we also are to make disciples who are engaged in the world, and, and that's our relationship with those who don't yet have a relationship with Christ. So that everything that we're seeking to do and, and to be as a church is encapsulated in those words. We want to make disciples by building uh, relationships. And, and so this morning, what we're going to do in, in just a few minutes is, is I want to share a, an idea with you this morning that uh, the elders and, and several others in our leadership have been prayerfully thinking about for around um, 18 months. And, and it's not an idea that we've made any decisions on. I, I really want to underline that. But it's something that we want to invite everyone in our church to be praying about and to be thinking about and to be talking about and to give us some feedback uh, on. Um, we, we really want everyone's voice to be heard in this conversation. It's very important to us. But before I get into the specifics, First of all, I want to talk a little bit about relationships, both within our church here as a community, and also our relationships with those who are outside of Grace community, but exist within our, our wider community. One of the things that, that I think has impacted so many people through the ministry of Grace Church is our history of being really quite centered around building rich relationships among the people who are a part of our church. Um, relationships are, are a part of our DNA. In fact, one of our core values, if you look on our website, is that God changes lives best when truth is experienced in the context of spiritual loving relationships. That's a little bit of a mouthful, but basically what it means is that God changes our lives best through friendship with one another. 
Um, one of the necessary components to living the Christian life is developing deep friendships with other people who can help you to do that, and, and you can help them to do that. And we want to be a church together where rich and, and meaningful relationships among the members are normal. But that being anonymous and, and kind of hanging on the fringes is, is strange. Now, now, the problem is that building those kinds of rich relationships is difficult. And it's something that has, is growing increasingly difficult in, in our culture. Uh, today, studies show that half of Americans report having three, fewer than three close friends, okay, three or less. And 12% of Americans report that they have no friends at all. Imagine that, 12% of people with no friends. Now, certainly there's lots of reasons for this, but, but one of them is that Americans spend so much of their lives sitting in front of what? Screens. Right? The average American spends 10 hours sitting in front of a screen. And as a result, we live lives that are much more lonely and isolated than people of previous generations would have ever imagined. And I think that this is one of many reasons why things like anxiety and depression are, are rising. People don't have the kind of supportive relationships that they, that they need anymore. Now, strong relationships, friendships, are vital to physical, emotional, and spiritual health, but they're becoming much more difficult to develop today. And what this means for us, the part that I want to underline, is that the Great Commission, our Great Commission as a church, discipling people through relationships is getting harder, and it will only increase to move in that direction. I always feel for people who are newer to our church. You know, I know that that's, that's some of you in, in this room right now. It can be so challenging to get to know people and to start building friendships and to figure out where to plug in. And that's even more true today, I, I believe, than it ever have, has been in the past. So one of the things that we've been doing as leadership is to spend some time thinking about how we prioritize developing friendships at Grace Church. I want everyone in this room to have great friends here at, at, at Grace Church, but, but how do we help that to happen? Um, how, how do we, uh, as a leadership, cr create the kind of environment where that is, is more likely? That's one thing that we've been spending some time thinking about. But something else has been on our hearts as well, and that is, a desire to also reach out into our community to build deeper relationships with, with those who have little or no church background or spiritual background. Um, that's something that we've been thinking a lot about too. Today, I would say in general that Grace Church tends to draw people who already have a church background. Right? Either they're coming, they've moved into the area, and um, they, they've attended another church, and now they've come to our church, or maybe they've drifted away from church for a while, and, and they're coming back. And I'm really happy that we draw people like that. Um, I, I think that that's wonderful. But we also have a very big heart for people that do not have a church background. The, the problem is that, that not only studies, but also, our own experience shows that unchurched people, people that don't have a church background, are increasingly less likely to attend a church. So, so 20 years ago, if an apartment complex was built next to our church, we would just assume that some of those people would trickle into grace. You know, they'd, they'd see there's a church in their backyard, and, and they'd come over and want to see what we're doing. But, but that is less and, and less uh, the case today. And in fact, we haven't seen much of that. So again, not just with building relationships within the church, but building relationships with those that are outside of the church, the Great Commission is getting harder. And, and it's not in terms of reaching people outside of the church that we aren't doing our best to reach them. It's not that we don't love people and don't care about them. The point is really just that, that, that today more creativity 
and intentionality is needed than ever before. So what, what we really desire to do is to intensify our focus on reaching people who do not yet know Christ. The Lord loves them, and we love them, and we want them to be able to experience and, and enjoy what the Lord has given to us in Christ. Now, when I say that we're, we're, we're really thinking about how to reach into uh, our community, I, I just want to say we are not aiming to be a seeker church or a mega church, if, if those words mean anything to you. If they don't, don't worry about it. But if they do, that's not what we're trying to be. We intend to always be, I suppose, as, as the Lord allows us to be so, a medium-sized, gospel-centered, Bible-teaching church with a mission of planting other churches. Okay, We don't want to just plant another church. We've already planted two. We don't just want to plant another one. We want to keep planting churches into uh, the future, which means starting churches in other communities. However, the community that we are in, in White Lake, is a big community. There's 31,000 people that live in White Lake alone, and we feel that there's an opportunity for us as a congregation to reach more of them. So, so we want to be a church that's really good at reaching people with church backgrounds, people that are coming back to church after some time away, and people who have never been to church before, who have no idea what Christianity really is, is all about. And what that has done for us is it's led us to consider how we can build a stepping stone or a bridge into our community. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me talk a little bit about our, our church building. We have a wonderful church building. We have a church building that has changed a lot since we first purchased it. It had dirt floor down in the basement. Remember that, Tom? I remember running around in here as a little kid before it, it was, there was even carpet in this room, I, I don't think, at the time. Our church building has grown. We've added to it. It's nicer and far more comfortable than it ever has been. We've got wonderful people who take care of it. But one of the, the weaknesses of our present building is that it is geared more towards stationary groups than it is for activity. It's a wonderful building for sitting, like we're doing now, but we don't have a lot of room for activity. Now, the thing that is an issue about that is that people tend to build friendships initially, how? usually through activity, right? They, they, they usually build friendships by doing things together, participating in stuff, having fun, sharing and partnering together in common interests, laughing and playing. And then it tends to be through those initial experiences that a basis for deeper connection is formed, right? You don't want to just stick with that level of friendship, but, but those kinds of things tend to be an icebreaker through which um, deeper and richer friendships begin to develop. And so the opportunity that the elders want to propose to the church today and, and to have us consider, in fact, we're, this is, you can almost call this a study that we're doing, we want to see what everybody thinks, is to, to build a new space on our property that we're calling a community life center. And, and the, the purpose in that is to give us, as a church community, more room for activities. Now, um, the community life center would, would include basically three things. Uh, a multi-purpose gym space. Uh, second of all, a larger kitchen. And then finally, some flexible uh, meeting rooms. And, and we, we feel that this could be a part of a plan for us to be intentional about building relationships, building friendships, both within the community of Grace Church, but also as a bridge out into the community around us so that we have a place to enjoy and build upon shared common interests. 
So a little bit about how we could envision uh, utilizing a space like, like this. Well, it, it would provide us the opportunity to um, participate in, in a number of different activities that we can't do now, or at least not very well in some cases. The most obvious would be sports. We, we would have a place where we could play basketball or volleyball or, or pickleball, things of, of that nature. But it wouldn't be just the athletics itself. It, it would be we could offer people teams, communities of people that are working together in, in sports, or just a place that people could come and hang out and be active together, especially on, on days like this one, winter days. Actually, this one's not so bad, is it? We'd be able to offer things like exercise classes and self-defense classes like we did a couple of weeks ago, student ministries and children's ministries and ministries like Homework Help and Buddy Break would have all kinds of new creative opportunities for ministry. Um, people could use that space to have a, a holiday party or a reception uh, of some kind, a, a larger size gathering. Um, the church would have a dedicated place where we could have events together where we could all be in the same room. You know, after church today, we're going to have a lunch, and, and it's difficult for us to, to have space. And, and we certainly can't be in the same space together. We would be able to offer year-round uh, activities and, and family events. And we'd have meeting space that wasn't used by other groups. So we, we, could, we could offer things like art classes or sewing groups or um, places for people to work on projects or even co-work together, potentially. Now, now, those are just a few ideas. But the, the main thing is that we would envision the Community Life Center to be kind of like a blank canvas. You know, you think of just blank canvas that Anyone in the church, no matter what they were interested in doing, could gather a few people together and utilize that space for that thing. So whatever ministry we could envision, whatever community building activities, that space would be kind of flexible enough so that we could um, utilize that space together. But this is the key. We would also be inviting those who are outside of our church to participate, too. We would use it as a, br a bridge, a, a stepping stone. I, I have invited a lot of people to our church over the years. It's easy for me to do that. When they find out I'm a pastor, I usually invite them. And I'm sure that, that many of you have, too. Probably 95% of the people that I invite to church, I don't ever see them at church. They all tell me yes, though, you know, because... I think they feel bad saying, saying no. But, but even right now, if, if um, we invite a person to church, a lot of times what I'm, what I'm saying is our services are at 9.30 and 11.15, right? Or I have a small group that I lead. I'd love for you to come and, and join us. That would be great to have you there. The thing is, if a person doesn't have a church background, they're probably not going to be drawn to that initially, right? And I hope if they came, they would really experience something wonderful and, and good. But it's not like oh, they think, oh, I would love to be a part of a service, been really wanting to do that, or to sit in, in a small group. But imagine if we were to say to a person, yeah, I, I go to Grace Church, and by the way, w w there's a group of us who play basketball on Thursday mornings. Would you have any interest in, in, in coming to do that? Or, hey, there's an art class that we offer on Tuesday nights. Or we've got some activities that your kids might be interested in. Or we're having a dinner together or some sort of family game night. I hope you get the idea. The, the point is to provide a space where we can build friendships, give people the opportunity for us to get to know them and this, them to get to know us for the purpose of living out and sharing God's love for them in Jesus Christ. So stepping stone is the big idea. Now, one more thing um, uh, uh, about that is uh, I had always thought that the first main project that I would ever bring to the church like this would um, be a church plant, starting a, a, a new church. And I realized that this is a little bit uh, different 
Um, to be honest, our experience with COVID was something that um, created a lot of thought in, in me and, and, and um, you know, it sparked a lot of conversation among the leadership. So a community life center wasn't something that was on my mind three or four years ago. Even though it is an idea we've been kind of kicking around for 20 years unseriously, okay? We've, we've gotten more serious about it recently. But I do feel that this would be a project that would also tie into our church planting efforts. There's a lot of reasons for that, but I'll, I'm just gonna mention one this morning. One of the biggest challenges to starting a new church is finding a location for that church to, to start in. It's very hard to find space. And when we planted um, Grace Commerce about 15 years ago, um, we couldn't find a space for a good couple of years, I, I believe it was. And so initially they had to meet downstairs in our high school room. Well, for different reasons, that was a very unideal spot for them to leave. Part of it was it, it required them to meet at a certain time. They had to meet early because the teenagers were gonna be coming in to use that space. And as soon as their service was over, rather than getting to hang around and, and, and be with each other and build relationships, they had to leave and because um, the teenagers had to um, spend time in, in the room. And they were also still a, a part of this space here, which was difficult because they were also going out from here. So there, there were a lot of things about that space that, that was unideal. Um, One of the things that we envision as a possibility is that this space could give a new church plant um, an opportunity to have someplace that was separate and something that they could use in a way that worked best for them. And again, if we were to build a space like this, it wouldn't just be for the next church plan. It would be for all of the church plants that the Lord allows us to do in the future. This would be a place that we would be building for the next, what, 70 years. I don't know how long do buildings last these days. A long time. Now, one last thought, and then we're going to continue um, with our service. There is one word that Jesus says in the Great Commission that is very, very important. And it happens to be the shortest word. And that is the word go. Jesus says that as we fulfill the Great Commission, part of that involves that we go. And, and what that means is that Jesus expects us to be moving forward and moving towards other people with the message of the gospel. Now, I think it is very natural today, and, and, I, and I feel this within myself at times, it's natural and, and easy for individual Christians and churches to adopt especially in times like we are in today, a kind of a bunker mentality. When, when times are changing and the culture around us starts to feel a little bit less friendly and predictable, and when the future seems like it's more uncertain than the past, we, we can't count on the things that, that we could before, Sometimes what we can do is we can talk ourselves into thinking that the best thing to do is to hunker down and batten up the hatches. You know, we should play it safe. We should seek to maintain what we have and not risk losing anything. And that's why Jesus' one word here needs to resonate with us. Jesus says, no, don't do that. He says, go. And, and, and why can we go? Well, he says that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Right? So things may look uncertain to us, but things are not uncertain to God. God is in charge of all of it, and he has a plan that he is certainly working out. So what Jesus is saying is he's saying, have courage. No, no matter what's happening around us, no matter how things, yeah, no matter how bad they are, it is always an exciting time to be the people who have the opportunity to carry the good news of Jesus Christ into a hurting world that needs a Savior. 
Now, I want to underline this. None of what I just said means that we need to build a community life center. Okay, I, I don't mean that. I, I don't want to manipulate anyone. It's just one idea of, of how we could do that. It's an idea that we're studying. Like I said, it's an idea we really want to get your feedback on, no matter how you feel about it. And in fact, maybe somebody will have a better idea as we go through the process. So it doesn't mean that we have to do what I'm proposing this morning. But what it does mean is that as a church, we've got to be looking both outward and also into the future as we think about how we as a congregation can intentionally move forward in our great commission. So we want you to be thinking about that. We want you to be praying about that. I, I want to impress these things on your hearts and minds. What do you think it looks like for Grace Church to continue to go? Now, wherever we go, I can't wait to find out. Whatever we choose to do, I don't know, but God knows. I'm very glad that we get to do it together. I am very thankful for this community, e each one of you. I, know I don't know all of you as well as I know some of you, but I'm very thankful for each of you. And I'm also very excited for whatever it is that our future holds. So, wherever we go, whatever we do, may God grant us a measure of his courage and may he also grant us from his wisdom. And may we move towards this process as a unified community, pleasing to the Lord, and above all else, seeking to bring him glory. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you we praise you. We love you. Thank you for giving us the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you that he brings into our hearts grace, salvation, love in ways that, frankly, we can't even fathom. I pray that you would help us to be a church that um, makes disciples Pray that you would help us to be a church that wants to be disciples. And we pray that whatever it means for us to go, that you would send us, that you would teach us, that you would give us your wisdom and your heart. We pray as we transition into music and into communion that uh, our spirits would be drawn uh, to you through your spirit. And we thank you for your goodness and your power and your glory. And we give all glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, just a, a brief uh, announcement about what is coming up later today. Uh, after the second service, if you haven't heard, we're going to have a lunch uh, together as a church uh, in the building here. We're going to have pizza and salad together and wait for it, it is Jets pizza. Okay, I know that every, I know that was the thing that was on everybody's mind, but we're gonna have some Jets uh, downstairs. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna invite everyone to come back uh, into this uh, space here. Uh, we will have childcare for, for children up until uh, fifth grade. And uh, at that time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna share with you a little bit more about the concept for the Community Life Center. We'll have some uh, blueprints that you can look at. We'll share a little bit more about the cost. And then we're gonna um, have a time just for people to share feedback, ask questions, give us you know, positive things, concerns, anything like that. As we move towards a process where eventually we're planning to, to survey uh, the congregation together. And, and what the elders are really trying to do is we're trying to answer when it comes to this project, two questions. First of all, should we do something like this? Okay, is this the right idea? Is, is this something that you could envision being helpful to our church family? Or maybe not, 
is there a different idea that we need to come up with? So when you hear the idea, wow, you know, we, we could have I events there, are there events that come to mind for you? You know, do you think, oh, I could do this, or we could reach out in this way or that way? Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to build something and have it just sit there all week, okay? We want to use it. And the only way to know whether or not we're going to use it is to ask everyone to get their feedback. So the question is, should we do this, first of all? Uh, the second question that we have to ask is, could we do this? Okay, because there's a, a cost that's associated to the project, which we're going to talk about a little bit after lunch. There is a, a, a very large expense. So we have to ask the question, can we raise the amount of money that would be needed to develop this place and, and, and continue to pay for its expenses? Or is that going to put us in a, in a financial situation that we don't want to be into? We, we want to be wise about this on both ends. So should we do this? Could we do this? The, the elders, again, as I've said, the only way to know the answer to those two questions, we can talk about it all that we want, right? But eventually, we have to come here, because that, this is the way that those questions get answered. So again, just want to invite you to be a part of, of that process, if you're able to. If you can't stay for lunch and um, our, our town hall today, which is going to last for about an hour, then um, feel free to come and talk with us, give us your feedback. Again, we'll have other more formal opportunities for you to do that, but we really um, covet your prayer and participation during this time. All right? Wow, I actually finished at 1030. I, I'm really happy ab about this. Uh, why don't we stand and we'll close. It's the little things that make me happy. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take Jets pizza and finishing at 1030. Father, as we go from this place today, we pray that you would help us, not, not just in this moment, to be honest Christians and faithful Christians and repentant Christians and serious Christians. We want to be that way all week. We know that what your son has done changes everything for our lives and for this world. And so we pray that you would strengthen our hearts so that we can walk with you, enjoy relationship with you, and enjoy extending that relationship with others. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in grace. All right, folks, good afternoon. Welcome. I think uh, several are still trickling in from downstairs, but we want to we want to get started and, and try to respect everybody's time in the afternoon uh, time that we've uh, we've prepared uh, to present this uh, the vision and uh, what uh, we are affectionately calling the community life center, whose name is not fixed even if we were to go through with this. So know that, but um, that's where we're at. So um, just to uh, shed a little bit of light on um, what Paul shared earlier in the service. Um, the elders have been prayerfully uh, discussing, considering, and executing some things behind the scenes um, that you will see and hear about today for the last 18 months. And uh, an individual um, in our congregation uh, has been instrumental in helping us prepare these plans and uh, um, and, and what the possibilities might look like. Um, and I would like to introduce Steve Veraloni uh, to, the, to the mic uh, right now to begin uh, to share with you uh, a number of the details. Afterward, um, you know, we'll engage in some discussion later on. Um, so unless Steve feels otherwise, I'm gonna ask that you um, hold your questions and comments till the end when we have an opportunity to discuss those collectively. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. I am so excited to be here today to uh, share some details of the elders' uh, vision. Um, this is uh, an idea that the seed was planted um, back in 2018, and the elders have really given it serious thought in prayer over the last 18 months. And I'm telling you, that's a long time to keep a secret. Really long time. In fact, I have uh, one of my, uh, well, many, but one of my uh, pickleball buddies, Andrea, is in the crowd there, and she's been talking about 
uh, for months and months how we need to build a pole barn and to, so we can play pickleball in, and it's been hard to, hard to keep my mouth shut, but I have been able to do so. What I'm about to share with you, I want you to know, is not in its final form. Um, but there was work that was necessary to give some consideration to what the Community Life Center might look like so that we could put a budget to it. So again, I just want to be clear, um, as, a, as Paul and the elders have uh, made clear, is that this is, nothing has been decided yet, but this was just a tool um, to get us to the end um, should God desire us to have a community life center at this time. I also want to say that um, <clears throat> some of you, when you look at blueprints or drawings, it's Greek to you and that's okay. Um, as Mark said, probably best not to take questions now, but afterwards I'm happy to answer um, any questions that you, you might have. Okay, so this is, a, this is the proposed site plan. This would be if uh, we were flying above the property. The current church building is right here. It was important to have the new facility proximate to the existing church for obvious reasons, and also we wanted it connected to the church I think for obvious reasons as well. Because the church property, as you may not know, is very large. But it just made no sense to have it not proximate to the church. So the plan, the best thinking at this point in time, is to have the new proposed uh, community life center in this area, which puts it basically where the overflow parking lot is present. And then we would take the overflow parking lot and place it um, in this area to the south. Um, and again, if you're wondering, and spatially, if you're having a hard time, the uh, place structure is about here on the property. So there's not any intention to do um, any uh, additional paving work other than relocating the overflow parking lot, because theoretically, we won't need any more parking because activities likely won't happen in the community life center while we're having services here. So that is uh, the site plan. So this is what uh, we're looking at uh, potentially doing. The building is conceived to be uh, approximately 13,700 square feet. It will consist of approximately 11,000 square feet on the first floor, and there will be a second floor mezzanine that will be just over 2,000 square feet. Okay, so this is the um, proposed first floor. Again, it will have a large multi-purpose uh, space, and I think Paul did an excellent job this morning on talking about um, the, the potential uses of that space. It's very diverse. There's a lot of opportunities. The one thing that he can't mention, and again, God willing, that uh, we are blessed to have this uh, space. I cannot wait to have like a, a Christian worship concert or something like that here. I don't think I heard that this morning, but that's one of my hopes and prayers. Um, the multi-purpose space will have a regulation size high school um, basketball court. Uh, I don't play basketball, but I know a lot of you do and love that game. Um, and uh, like I said, there'll be a full-time uh, regulation size uh, court there. It will also have a large uh, kitchen area. Presently, it's conceived to be a warm-up kitchen in support of receptions and banquets and things of that nature. It's not contemplated at this point in time to be a commercial kitchen, but again, um, that is something that is open uh, for discussion, consideration, thought, and prayer. Um, we want to make sure we had plenty of storage. Um, this area up here is conceived as storage, you know, 
chairs, tables, and the like for the various uses of the space. And then back in this area, it's conceived, uh, as Paul spoke about the potential use, as a home for a church plant. And so there's going to be storage, um, platforms, uh, musical equipment, and the, and the like that's uh, conceived for that use. Um, large toilet room area, obviously, to support the multi-purpose area. And this is cut off here, but this is the connection link that will take us out to the south door um, over here. Over here. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. <Ty. laughs> okay. This is the second floor that uh, just will be over at the north end. Um, it's just conceived to be various meeting spaces of various, they're intentionally of different size. Um, there might be a small, um, a small group meeting. There might be uh, a large teaching seminar, um, a music class, uh, a lecture of some sort that doesn't need a lot of space, but it's in, intended to be uh, very flexible um, there. And this is just over 2,000 square feet of meeting space. Okay, so here we are back again. The one thing we wanted to do um, is to you know make it blend into the existing building. So what we've done, what we're conceiving is that at the north end and the south end will incorporate um, the existing brick or as close as we can match to the existing brick. Um, now it would be great to brick up the whole uh, structure but that is would be cross prohibitive. So we've incorporated some in my business just pre-colored split face masonry units. It's a decorative block that would blend in with the brick and then there would be metal siding up above. The eave height is 25 feet. So if you can get in perspective, this is a building that pitches up. So there'll be plenty of height in the middle for basketball games, volleyball games, those high sets uh, and, and the like. So oftentimes it's hard, again, for some folks that aren't used to looking at plans to, to uh, really visualize what this thing might look like. This is a rendering that was prepared that gives um, an idea of what this facility might look like. Again, this is the connector link on the south end of the building. Um, so the south door is inside this. And so it'll run across the front and connect into the community life center. Again, we'll do the best that we can to match the existing brick at the north and the south end, uh, a, a different material block in the siding up above. So again, this is an artist illustration, an artist rendering of what uh, the facility may look like um, should we proceed ahead. As you can imagine, um, this comes at a cost. And that's what we all have to pray about to see if it's God's will that as a church community, if this is something um, we should be funding for all the, the great reasons that um, Paul talked about this morning. And even though I say great reasons, that doesn't mean now is the time. Um, but if it is, uh, it comes at a, sig a significant cost. We are projecting at this point in time, in today's dollars, it would be approximately $1.9 million. That includes approximately $120,000 of, uh, of soft costs. And if you're wondering, um, to date, the work that's been done, the drawings that have been done, um, has not cost the church anything, other than the rendering, uh, to pay the artist that did the rendering. But there's design fees that will be, uh, have to be uh, incurred, uh, permits. Um, one thing that uh, as we got along and started sharing uh, with folks, the, uh, 
the facilities team brought about the idea of whether or not we're going to have to c connect to the water and uh, sewage facilities. Um, good news and bad news on that. Um, the township will require us to connect to uh, the sanitary sewer, which in the, the end is a good thing. Um, but because we have a good um, type 2 well that's operating, we don't have to connect to the water until such time that that well um, would need replacement. They would not allow us to replace it. So all of those things are sort of wrapped up in this design engineering. The hard costs of the building um, is budgeted in today's dollars at approximately $1.7 million. That is a pretty complete and a very accurate budget into if we were to build that today. We've also included, for budgeting purposes, $125,000 in contingency. Contingency are, is, is uh, an amount of money that's anticipated to be needed. Maybe there's some design uh, creep. Maybe as, as a church community, we're prayerfully thinking about this facility and somebody comes up with, hey, we really should add such and such. Well, we would have a place to draw from to add that. Um, there might be some other unexpected costs, and so rather than coming back to the church community, um, we have a source to fund those things that might arise. So that is uh, everything that uh, I'm prepared to share with you at this point in time. And I'm happy to spend time afterwards to talk more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Not just for today, but for all of the work that you have uh, invested into this project. Steve, thanks. Well, before we uh, open up some discussion, I just wanted to mention three things briefly about the cost. You know, the cost is a very important part of this project, ob obviously. There's three things that, that the elders have been thinking about uh, related to the cost. One of those things is that even though, again, and I really mean this sincerely with all of my heart, a decision has not been made. We're not trying to push anything forward. Uh, we, we, we really want to bring things to the congregation. But one thing that, um, that has happened is we have saved for future building projects uh, just over $100,000 over the past uh, few years. And along with that, within about the last year and a few months, we've received some special gifts uh, totaling right around $300,000. Uh, without even talking, you know, about a, a project like this. So we have $400,000 in savings that we could potentially, if we decided to move forward, that we could potentially um, use towards uh, this project. So that's one thing to know. Another thing that might be helpful to know is that in our research, um, what we've found is that if churches move into a three-year uh, stewardship campaign, which we would need to do if we moved forward in the project. Usually they can anticipate that they would bring in about 1.5 1 1 times to two times their annual budget. So um, if we were to do that, that at least puts us in the range financially uh, towards this project. Um, so what, what we've decided to do finally is we've decided to do a study to determine whether or not, first of all, as I said this morning, the congregation likes this idea, and this is something that the congregation feels that we should do. We're also doing a study that will help us to understand um, the costs and, and our potential. And in order to do uh, uh, what I hope will be a really good job with that, we've hired an organization to come in and help us to do a feasibility study on this project. A couple things are gonna be happening at, at, at one time. First of all, is in, in about a week and a half, 
everyone in the church will have an opportunity to share how they feel in an anonymous survey with this organization about the project. Things you like, things you don't like, concerns, wh whatever you think, it will go into this survey. The church is also going to have an opportunity to think about, you know, if we were to do this project, here's how I might be able to contribute to the project financially. Now, it's not a pledge. Again, it's completely anonymous. It's going to go to this organization. We are not going to see that. But what that will help us to understand is, do people think we should do this? And what is our potential of, of the amount of money that we could raise towards this project if we were to go ahead uh, with it? And at the same time, the organization is also going to be doing a five-year study on our um, giving so that we can understand giving patterns and all of that will be combined into a report that the elders will have an opportunity to read and think about and pray about that we're really hoping will give us a lot more information in terms of whether or not it's wise for us to, to, to move forward. So we're, we're going to, again, be launching um, that study and, and you'll be receiving information about a survey in about a, a week and a half. And I'll share a little bit more ab about that with us um, next, next Sunday. But we want to really do our homework and do as careful of a job as, as we can before we were to um, decide to, to move forward. As we move into the future, we do need to change. The, the church always needs to change. We need to grow. We're going to have different people here in 20 years you know, than, than, than we have today. But what I, what I really heard from what you're saying is, we also have a certain culture here, and we have a certain mission, and we have a certain vision, and we don't want to lose that. So I think our heart together is, how do we do both? How do we move into the future in the way that reaches different needs in our community and in the community around us, but how do we do that in a way that serves our culture and our vision and our purpose? And you might be right. We might have to think about that that more because we, we don't want to shortchange ourselves in a number of different areas, but we do want to give new opportunities for ministry and, and service and, and friendship um, here within the community and other places. So all I'm trying to say is that's an open question, and that goes back to exactly what Rick was saying, that we really need to be praying that the Lord will lead us in this uh, decision. When this community center, we, the elders had a retreat in 2021, I think it was, where we first started talking about this idea seriously. And the very first thing was said by Todd. Todd, Todd said, you know what? If the Lord wants us to do this, he will make a way for us to do it. And if he doesn't, he won't. And that's, that's our prayer. That's our heart. God, if you want us to do this, we, we know you'll help us to figure out those questions. Uh, hopefully, all the questions are answerable one way or another. And if he doesn't, well, that's great, too, because that's not his will, and we don't want to build something if, if that's not um, his, his heart for us. So, um, again, that's what this process is all about. Um, one more thing that Sue Hack said. I'm really glad that we can do this, too. This is $2 million that we're talking about. Some churches, you have a meeting like this to figure out what color the carpet should be, and everybody's yelling at each other, right? But to be able to talk about these things and deal with them and pray about them as a community together is, is so important. So I, I just, we, we really value um, the feedback. If you did not have an opportunity to share today, please still do so. Two ways that you can do that. One is just to get in touch with any of us. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll set aside our time. I would love to do that. If you feel like, eh, no, they don't really want to hear what I have to say because I'm kind of poo-pooing this a little bit, we especially want to hear what you have to say because we don't want to, again, I'm trying to say we don't want to do it if, if we shouldn't do it. Um, but please do reach out to uh, any of us. We're compiling. We've got um, pages of, of um, thoughts and questions, and, and um, so we, we want to certainly add to that. As I said, we are going to be launching next Sunday a formal survey of the congregation for the feasibility study. So even if you don't talk with us, you're going to have an opportunity to fill out a survey to give, you, to give us feedback 
to, um, I believe there's 10 different questions. And um, again, it's gonna be completely anonymous, but um, we would really appreciate you uh, participating in, in that as well. And then uh, again, this organization that we're working with will compile that information provide us with a report, and then we'll get back to you as quickly as we can um, with an update. Thank you again for coming. I'm gonna have to ask Todd if it's okay. Would you pray for us to, to close? And, oh, yeah. Also, one other thing. Just to uh, make sure that all the information is as clear as possible, we've put together a, a brochure or an information sheet that's got um, a lot of information about this project on it. So if you could take this sheet and then uh, use, use it to, to uh, inform yourself as you pray and, and talk together, that'd be great. We'll pass one out to you on the way, on the way out. Lord, we are thankful for this time. I'm thankful for this, our church family that we can come together like this and to have dialogue and to really just dive into all the details here. Um, I really pray that you would uh, give each of us here a lot of wisdom and ask that you would guide each of our hearts as we prayerfully consider this. We ask that you would put it on each person's heart to be able to consider this in detail, and we're just excited to where you want to lead us. Like Paul said, if, uh, if this is something that we should do, please lead us in that direction. If this isn't something we should do, please lead us in that direction as well. And we pray that you would give us all open hearts to the possibilities of this. And we are just here to do your will as a congregation. We exist in this community to make your name known to as many people as possible. And we have that heart whether we do this project or not. So uh, we ask for your guidance as we go into this next phase. And we thank you that you are such a loving, gracious father who cares for us. And it's within that spirit that we go out from here today. And in your name we pray. Amen.